first car practical requires you to be able to investigate biological specimens using a light microscope. By the end of this video, you will know how to prepare microscope slides for samples of plant and animal cells. You will know how to set the microscope to generate a focused image of your sample. You'll be able to measure the field of view and draw a scientific diagram. So first of all, let's look at preparing a sample of plant cells. And in this case, we're going to use onion cells. First of all, you need to peel a thin layer of epidermal tissue from a small piece of onion. This layer needs to be very thin so that light can pass through the sample and reach the lenses of the microscope. The next step is to transfer your sample to a clean microscope slide. To do this, pipette a drop of water onto the centre of the slide and use your tweezers to lay the sample of onion tissue on top of the water. Add a small drop of iodine to the onion cells. This will make the cell walls and nuclei more visible when you view the sample down the microscope. Then you need to secure and protect your sample by using a mounted needle to lower a glass cover slip down over the onion cells. Finally, press down gently onto the cover slip to remove any air bubbles. Air bubbles look like big black spots down the microscope and can obstruct your view of the cells, so you want to get rid of as many of these as you possibly can. You can prepare a slide of animal cells in a similar way. Here I've used the example of human cheek cells. So take a clean cotton bud and swab the inside of your cheek to collect the cells. To transfer the cells to a microscope slide, rub the end of the cotton bud that was in your mouth into a drop of water in the centre of a slide. This time, use a drop of methylene blue to stain the colourless cheek cells. Methylene blue stains DNA and will make the nuclei more visible. Then, lower a cover slip over the sample and remove any air bubbles. Once your sample slide is ready to view, it is time to set the microscope. First of all, use the clips to secure your slide on the stage. Ensure that the sample is central over the light source. There's no point shining light through the glass slide. It has to pass through your sample in order to magnify it. Next, select the lowest powered objective lens by turning the carousel of lenses until the lowest powered lens is directly above your sample. This lens usually has a magnification power of four times. Use the course adjustment knob to move the stage upwards towards the objective lens and stop just before the slide touches the lens. You don't want your slide to hit the lens because it could damage your slide and the microscope. Now look through the eyepiece lens and use the course adjustment knob again to move the stage back down, gradually towards the light source. Stop when the specimen is almost in focus. Continue looking down the eyepiece lens and use the fine adjustment knob now to focus the image. Stop when the image is clear. If you need to increase the magnification of the image, select a higher powered objective lens and refocus the image using the adjustment knobs. The area that you can see down the microscope is called the field of view, or FOV for short. By selecting the lowest powered objective lens first, you will see the widest field of view down the microscope and be able to find your sample easily. To measure the field of view at any given magnification, Take a clear ruler and place it on the stage. Look down the eyepiece lens and measure the diameter of the circular area that you can see. This measurement is the field of view. As you zoom in on your sample, by selecting an objective lens with a higher magnification power, the image size stays the same. So as you can see here, the white circle stays the same size on the screen, but the actual size of the field of view decreases. You can see a smaller portion of the sample because we have zoomed in. So if you need a higher magnification, you will need to re-measure the field of view. The last step is to draw a scientific diagram of what you have observed down the microscope. Examiners are very particular about how these diagrams must be drawn. So to get top marks, use a sharp pencil and ensure that you don't shade or colour any part of the diagram. Use unbroken lines to outline the main features of the image and make sure your drawing takes up half of the space that you are given. Label all visible features with straight lines that do not cross. Add the scale and magnification. And finally, add the sample name. 
As a final note, don't let your imagination fill in the gaps. Don't draw things that you can't actually see with a light microscope in your scientific diagram. So under the light microscope, it is possible to see the cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. You might also see the mitochondria, but this will depend on the power of the magnification that the microscope that you are using can achieve. In plant cells, you will also be able to see the cell wall and you might see chloroplasts and the vacuole. However, you definitely will not be able to see ribosomes or any detail within the organelles. This is because they are too small for a light microscope to resolve. In the next video, I go through the microscopy calculations that you need to know for this practical. If you would like some free GCSE revision notes that accompany this series of videos, please head over to my website www.drmeclever.com. You'll also find my revision guides here. And if you want to say hello and get updates on my latest work, scrollable revision notes and freebies, you can follow me on Instagram or other social media under the handle at drmeclever. And finally, if you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and share.